Sally YouTube. I am with the lovely Jess from the channel Love in London. If you don't know her channel, she'll tell you all about it, but it's all about life in London on the other side. And we thought it could be really fun to do a video on the concept of which city is better to live in, Paris versus London. <laughs> That's a big, big question. So Jess, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. So my name is Jess and I am the founder of Love and London. And it's a YouTube channel where people who are coming to visit London can get all types of tips and tricks and I have lived in uh, the UK for about six years now but I'm originally from New York as you can probably hear. Oh cool actually I've been in France for just coming up six years so we're we're pretty similar in that respect. So in this video guys we're not necessarily going to compare uh, culture, entertainment, nightlife that kind of stuff because what we said is that whether it's Paris or it's London you've got plenty of it but what we're more going to talk about is general lifestyle, cost of living, what it feels like to live in these cities, what we do for fun. Did you know that it rains just as much in Paris as it does in London so you cannot use weather as as the excuse for not liking <laughs> London. <laughs> okay, good to know that. So just heading into the city itself, I guess, should we tack the city sizes? So what, what it feels like to live in the city in terms of size and expansiveness and that kind of thing, because they're quite different in that respect. Yeah, so London, I feel like is really expansive compared to mm. say New York City, if I guess if you're thinking about specifically Manhattan and also just a lot of other cities around the world, I feel like it's really spread out and it's actually a lot of the city feels like almost like small little towns but that are very mm. close together and a little bit more compact and it can take you uh, to get like from one end of the city to the other depending on what kind of route you're you're having to take it actually can take you like an hour to an hour and a half to get some places and mm. especially visitors don't really realize that before they they come here i would say paris is a little bit uh, it's smaller, it's a bit denser, and it's a little bit more walkable, I would say. Like, you could actually walk from the Notre Dame down to the Eiffel Tower from one end of the city to the other across, a, like, a lazy afternoon. And what I've noticed in, in London is that the um, underground stops are much further apart than the metro stops in Paris. So on the metro, you're stopping, like, so regularly. It's like you're barely on the line for, like, 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and there's another stop, another stop. Whereas in London, you can tell it's bigger because the distance between the stops uh, do drag out a little bit more. And it's interesting what you were saying about the village feel because in Paris, I feel like everyone wants to live in Paris and any almost any arrondissement will do. It's all kind of the same, same. The buildings all kind of look the same at the end of the day. And then there's a big thing where it's like the suburbs. That's where you don't want to live. There's like literally a line around the city. Whereas if I'm not mistaken, and you can tell me in London, people actually love to live outside of London and you go to the city for work. Is that right? Yeah, I think it depends on the type of people, but I would say that that's correct, especially when Londoners um, get married and they're starting to think about having children. I guess it just depends on like your personality because lots of people also end up staying in London. London separated by zones so zone one is like right in the middle and then they mm -hmm. kind of goes out like a bullseye so um, also people will compromise and they'll move from like one, zone one or two out to like four or five and it's still technically basically part of London, but they're right. getting more space. Obviously Paris is an expensive city um, in general, but London has particularly high rent prices, I've heard. And I, I, I did some research and apparently it's 30% higher than Paris for around about the same surface level. I do find, have a lot of friends in London who are flatting, you know, and these are people in their late 20s, early 30s, and they're living with other people. Whereas I suppose in Paris, in our age group, late 20s, early 30s, every couple has their own place. It may only be one bedroom, but they're still renting their own place. That is very interesting to hear that difference between, that much of a difference between rent prices, because I would not have guessed that. As a New Yorker moving here, I also was surprised at, I think, London and New York are fairly, like, I think they're meant to be relatively comparable. Uh, maybe London's a little bit more expensive, okay. but I also think that the, and I'm kind of going off of just my own guesses, but I think that the um, average salary is lower here. So the rents mm. are higher and people don't tend to make as much money. 
So it also yeah. makes it like you feel the burn even more. It's true in Paris, our salaries are a lot lower than what we'd get in Australia, New Zealand, um, and what I can imagine in the States as well. So that's pretty interesting. So tell me, what do what do Londoners like to do for fun? Like on the weekend? I know it's hard to, and I know it depends, but uh, you and your friend group, let's say, what's the kind of activities that you get up to in London? Well, I think the um, the stereotype of going to the pub is definitely mm. true, at least in okay. my friend group. I think some Londoners are so great at like trying new things in their area and trying new restaurants, trying new bars. But then other people really like to just stick to their own places and they like to maybe hang out in their flats more and cook dinners and um, just mm -hmm. venture out maybe for a drink or two at the local pub and that's really it. So it just kind okay. of... It it kind of depends, but I think across the board, it the pub thing is that's all it's real <laughs> okay <laughs> that's good to know for us i would say the equivalent would it would be taking the apero which is um a kind of what you would call an after work drinks but it lasts all evening until midnight where basically you're just surviving on alcohol cheese and charcuterie so it's like meat cheese and drinks <laughs> and you're outside on the terrace because at least one of your friends smokes so <laughs> that would definitely be the equivalent I would say what about food and drink and that kind of thing do you have the brunch culture and what what does a nice dinner out look like tell us about that sure so what's really cool about London is that it's um, you can find any cuisine here and you can probably find a place that does it really well whether it's like um, a little hole in the wall that you totally didn't expect but actually does a type of cuisine really authentically or mm -hmm. they'll have like a really nice high-end place like you can find high-end Italian you can find high-end like modern British things like that mm -hmm. there's um, tons of uh, Asian influence here Indian food is massive here and brunch has started to trickle over and again as a New Yorker okay. like brunch is like so ingrained in New Yorkers and it's, oh, yeah. it's really starting to pick up Steve now so it's good I, I mean I personally enjoy it <laughs> Okay, great. So for us in Paris, I would say the French bistro is still king. Food is amazing, but I found it so same same kind of everywhere I went. You know, you always have the same cuts of meat on the menu. You, for dessert, it's always a tiramisu or a creme brulee or a melting heart chocolate. I just kind of felt like the menu in the French bistro, it, it's delicious, but it's quite repetitive. So I was trying to um, trying to seek out a bit of diversity and I find here you really have to go to specific neighborhoods from what I've seen anywhere you go in London you can find a decent Indian place a decent Thai place like so that's a little bit different in Paris I find the diversity is is less and in terms of the brunch culture I was devastated when I came to Paris because you pay like 20 euros and they give you some yogurt and a croissant and and some eggs on toast and you're like <laughs> no this is not brunch so I'd love to have a talk about work culture quickly so what are the what would you say are the standard work hours and is it true the cliche that it's kind of compulsory to go out for after work drinks with your team in London? <laughs> so well the work hours are um, about 9 to 5.30 or 9 to 6 and okay. compared to the US the work culture here in my opinion is much better. Uh, mm -hmm. You get I, by by law, I think you get at least 20 days holiday a year and then also bank holidays on top of that. So that's, mm -hmm. I think that's pretty good. However, London I've read is um, the people that live in London and work in London are the most overworked in the UK and also I think in Europe too. Okay. So relatively speaking, it's meant to be yeah, the worst in the continent. And the afterward drink is, I think the compulsory part is, it depends on your team and how much peer pressure <laughs> that they, they put on you. But Fridays, definitely. I think even yeah. people that don't drink uh, will always want to go at least to hang out at the pub for a little bit on a Friday. So this is where I think would see the most difference. In okay. Paris, it, there's so many differences. I would say, okay, firstly, the working hours would be more 9.30 till 7 p.m. Um, oh. and and because we take a big one hour lunch and the reason we take this lunch is because that's where we have the equivalent of after work drinks as in that's when you connect with colleagues it's when you connect with your manager you sit down at the table and you eat and you chat with someone with a group of people for an hour you would never eat lunch at your desk that's a big no-no in France 
however we don't have the after work social kind of letting loose drinking with your manager kind of culture again in, in France it's a lot more hierarchical I would say and the managers like to at least at first keep that distance and kind of keep that mystery you definitely don't see like you know the big partners getting loose with the juniors on a Friday night I would like to quickly talk about just a few more things so the first is around the friendliness I don't think we need to talk about that in much detail but um, I, I do find obviously in London people are warmer there's something around the Parisians where they're just like they're just looking at you like don't even approach me <laughs> you're right though I think especially being an American um, and I'm so used to like going back to the US and people striking up conversations on the bus or like store or something but Londoners don't do that um, and especially like the whole joke is that you can't make eye contact with anybody on the two because it's just like then you're just like what do I do oh my god this is so yeah. weird <laughs> they're not mean or rude I think they're just everyone's kind of in their own zone and they're just not yeah. as approachable there's a lot of anxiety around the fashion in France it's, it's known as you know the fashion capital and obviously when you come to Paris there's a look there's a real look it's very simple classic chic I like to call it the uniform because I feel like everyone always looks the same um, but in London my impression is that anything goes really in terms of fashion would you would you say that that's correct I always I struggle to answer this question because mm. I have actually created a couple of videos about what what you can wear when you're in mm. London and I give like some guidelines I think people in Europe dress a little bit nicer generally speaking mm. than Americans tend to dress and there's mm -hmm. some like stand out and I think you've talked about this in your videos before there's like stand out American things of like you have like the college name across yeah. your sweatshirt <laughs> and like they, that you never see here but at the end of the day it's you can just wear whatever you want because you're in a big city like you're never gonna see these people again so it's not yeah really, it's not that you can be comfortable if you guys have any questions about about the life quality of life cost of living that kind of thing please let us know down below I'll definitely check them out and see if I can get back to you guys on that um, I find this a really fascinating to topic and let us know down below if you are hashtag team Paris or hashtag team London uh -oh. <laughs> to be honest I think you could have a really great life in both cities amazing so, thank you so much for having me on the channel. Yeah, see you guys next video Wednesday on the Not Even French channel. A bientôt. Bye.